I was saddened to learn that only last week, thousands of people in Lear County, Unity State, were forced to flee their homes following a surge of fighting, along with disturbing reports of sexual violence, looting and destruction of civilian and humanitarian property. Civilians, including women and children, continue to bear the brunt of the senseless violence. I strongly condemn these violent attacks on civilians, but in particular, attacks on humanitarians and the looting of life-saving supplies and assets, all of which is unacceptable. I would want to recognize the progress made and applaud the parties for overcoming the impasse in reaching the 3rd of April agreement on security arrangements regarding specifically the unified command and control structures. I take note of the presidential decree on 12th of April, which is a crucial and necessary step for the implementation of the peace agreement. It's important to recognize that all parties cooperated and contributed to make this possible. continue to advocate the highest levels of government for it to assume a greater responsibility to intervene in the protection of civilians, which includes humanitarians. For humanitarians, saving lives should not mean losing lives. With the appointment of a unified, uh, single unified command, we expect to see greater coherence in government response to local conflicts across the country. Upon the invitation of the government, the mission stands ready to support the South Sudanese in holding elections and building the necessary political institutions. The holding and timing of elections, of course, remain a sovereign decision for the people and leaders of South Sudan. Now that the parties have reached agreement on the unified command structure, the way is now open for a surge on other critical tasks, which includes transitional justice, undertaking financial, legal and judicial reforms, and the constitution-making process, which is fundamental to building a new social contract to underpin national unity. UNMIS is committed to providing technical support working with local organizations to encourage an understanding of the constitution-making process and to ensure that the process is inclusive. When I briefed the Security Council in March, I reflected on the long-standing delays in implementing the peace agreement. I also stressed that a window of opportunity remained for South Sudan to complete its transition in accordance with the timeline set out in the peace agreement. That remains my view today, although I can see that the window is closing. Recent progress gives hope that the government can accelerate implementation and make maximum use of the time left uh, in the transitional period. <laughs>